there we go. There's Nick, the awesome Nick Hots, the Hots for Nicks. Anyway, fast draft. That's what we love. So game two will be up in just a second. All I need to do is display it for all the people on the stream, and that should come up. You can give us some more information already. Did they start? Did they not? Yeah, they are in the map striking stage right now. We do have Gamers 2 banning out Cursed Hollow, Haunted Mines, and Tomb of the Spider Queen. Now we are awaiting the map strikeouts from Stigma. And uh, I gotta feel they need to strike out Dragonshire here. That was such a dominating performance by Gamers 2. I feel that Stigma needed to switch up their kind of lane strategy after they took out that first wall. But yeah, I don't know. Gamers 2 seems to have the edge on Dragonshire, and only Dragonshire and Sky Temple remaining in the pool. Black Hearts Bay and Garden of Terror being struck out by Stigma. I have a strong feeling we're going to be going to Sky Temple here, Hefla. Yep, definitely. I'm, I'm just confused. Someone in the chat just told, told me I need better internet. I have no idea why that is, because <laughs> it's the highest you can get pretty much across Europe, but sure. <laughs> Industrial line confirmed not enough. I and actually, Silicon oh, Valley sorry. or something. Yeah, and actually, we're going back. The salty run back to Dragonshire. Stigma not afraid, banning out Sky Temple, and that leaves Dragonshire as the only map left. Stigma, could there be an Abathur ban here? That's that's pretty interesting to be honest. I mean, it, having Dragonshire again after Stigma got a beating on this map, I think they would have ran a better one on Cursed Hollow. But then again, they say. Maybe we just want our revenge, or maybe <laughs> we just grant that Gamers 2 is a good team and we just try the same again. Ban the Abathor right now and then go for something else. Try to force him into some other master plan behind the draft. We have to see. Yeah, Gamers 2 actually, though, banning out the Cursed Hollow there. And interesting enough, Stigma choosing to go back to Dragonshire. Really, really interesting. I feel if they go back to Dragonshire, banning Abathor would be in. They're, um, it would be advantageous for them because Gamers 2 just using such a strong strategy with those lane matchups and pushing power from Sylvanas Illidan and having the flexibility of the Abathur kind of able to help out any lane of his choosing. But still, waiting for that ban here oh, from Stigma. Oh, no, 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 I got news. Uh, I think they misdrafted the map. I just, okay, not I a just... huge surprise then. <laughs> <clears throat> Oh yeah, apparently, no, it was the wrong order, wrong team started, something, something, something. I'm just reading uh, the thing okay. now. So we're going to get a new draft in just a second. So please just shout at me when we have a new draft. In the meantime, um, I'm just going to show our pretty faces so people okay. can complain a bit more about my camera. And yes, my camera should, just uh, for explanation, like I was not planning on casting this one. Um, not even Heroes of the Storm caster, I just play the game, I follow the scene, obviously, as I follow pretty much all of esports scenes. But I come from the Dota 2 scene mainly. But Jester, the guy who was casting for you all the qualifiers, um, he's actually now in the US, from Canada to US, and working with Blizzard there on the whole Heroes of the Dorm project. Uh, and that's why he's occupied. So, yeah, you can shout at me all you want. My camera won't get better from it. But just so you know, I actually ordered a new one on Amazon in the last break <laughs> because I got sick of people complaining yeah still waiting here for the draft we did have a situation that pop up I do believe the draft bugged or they kind of had the wrong orderings so just waiting on that draft and yeah I gotta wonder was it the map that was bugged there or you know what was the situation because going back to Dragonshire is a bold move coming from Stigma and I have to feel that they did not want that. Yep, and let's see, come on, give us a new draft. Hmm. What's taking so long making a second draft, Link? I, I have no idea, man. Your guess is as good as mine. Yeah, and that's not a good guess, <laughs> after all. <laughs> well, that means we have to be patient for now. But I mean, game number one, there's, there's enough residual hype left because, I don't know, that last fight it was, was just amazing. It's, it's one of those fights where you grab your keyboard and you just punch your monitor with it or something. That's, <laughs> that's how I handle all the frustration after such a fight. That's pretty much how it ran down. But let's see. Give us... There it is. New draft is coming up. 
Yes, we do have that draft, and map striking has begun once again. And interestingly enough, Gamers 2, once again, being the first one to strike the maps here. Cursed Hollow, once again, being struck out by them. And Tomb of the Spider Queen. And now it's going over to Stigma to ban out the other maps. Garden of Terror being struck out. And what will be the next map? Dragonshire. Okay, so we do have the ban yeah. on Dragonshire from Stigma. Not wanting to face Gamers 2 on that map, knowing they have the strategical advantage. And even had they gone back to that map, using an Abathur ban to yeah. kind of counter their strategy is not the best thing. And <gasps> oh my god, Haunted Minds, I'm so excited. <laughs> is that correct though? Is this a... They banned out three maps there. Is that, is that correct? Is that correct? Oh my god. <gasps> yeah. well, <laughs> it would be the first mines. Stigma's got to feel at a loss of what to do against the behemoth that is Gamers 2. And sometimes taking Haunted Mines is one of the best ways to come back in a series to throw kind of a curveball at your team, or at the opposing team, I should say. And we're still going to have that Abathur band there from Stigma. Abathur is actually quite good on the Haunted Mines in certain situations. Well, we have to see. I'm, 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 I'm trying to. I'm, I'm still surprised by, by the mines pick. I mean, that you. I can understand that you don't want to have Garden Terror or Dragonshire against Gamers 2 because, uh, especially, the guy I love the most in Gamers 2 is uh, Stucho. I hope I pronounced it right. The Polish name. Um, in this game or in the last game, I mean, we saw him even uh, not taking the Dragon Knight. If you keep it, like, if you remember correctly, all the Gamers 2 games, he picks up every Garden Terror and every DK, at least 99%. But the situation was like that that the Abathor actually picked it up, which was the first time we actually saw some some swapping in the roles because he was just busy fighting in the bottom lane. But still, whenever he is on on those units to control, he's doing such a good job. I, I really love it. But now. Let's see what we have. Abathor being banned out as well as the Vikings. Yeah, both kind of specialist heroes that are good at Haunted Mines, able to get some soak in while you're going for the, the Skull phase of the map, getting extra experience while the teams are below fighting in the mines. But now we have the first pick onto Illidan here from Stigma. Yep, I mean Illidan... Now he doesn't have the support of Abathor, so that makes it, of course, uh, a bit harder. And Stigma just takes it away before Gamers 2 can take it. The question is now, Gamers 2, the Uther block pick, does it come? Or do you just secure Vala, Sylvanas, for example, get the two, two ranged ladies together? Well, Sylvanas is such a strong pick here on the Haunted Mines because you have that initial phase of the game where you're laning four and one in different lanes, and I feel that Stigma is going to be you know, hard-pressed to defend against the Sylvanas. They're going to have to lane against Sylvanas with their four-man in the opposing Golem lane. Sylvanas, the Sylvanas team is definitely going to want to be pushing their lane with four. Um, I don't know if it'll be an Uther pick here. I feel that Uther can be really nice on this map, because even if he is eliminated in a team fight in the mines, he can provide a ton of healing with his flash of light ability in his um, undead trait, basically. Yeah, I also have to admit something else. I mean, uh, the problem for me in mines is, I mean, I have a, uh, don't have the best knowledge, obviously, of, of the games from a like pro perspective. A lot of like insight is, is missing there. That's why you are here. But when it comes to mines, I'm really inexperienced. I, obviously, I, I know the map and everything about it. But the problem is, how do pro teams right now play mines because I've seen different approaches like fights uh, around the, the mine timer trying to claim most of the skulls or going in claiming the central teams uh, the central teams I say the, the central camps getting most of the skulls and then skipping the golem going out pushing while the others have to go in for the golem and claim them there's so many approaches on mines I'm I'm trying to wrap my ha my head around all this right now well, the thing is, there's been so many nerfs to the strength of the golem on Haunted yeah. Mines, so defending can be in your advantage. So a lot of teams will get about 30 skulls in that first mine, and they'll just abandon the boss in the mines to the opposing team and go for the push to kind of equalize out that skull different, uh, differential. And yeah, I just feel that you don't really have to contest that boss 
sometimes it's just better to go for the push. And even some teams going as far as saying, we're not even going to take the Knights here. We're more interested in soaking experience and pushing the buildings here. And um, yeah, let's get back into this draft, though. We do have the Zagara being paired with the Sylvanas. So Zagara, before Sylvanas came out, Zagara was one of the strongest picks on Haunted Minds because of her pushing power as well. But now we have the duo of Sylvanas and Zagara. Amazing pushing power between these two heroes, but also amazing Wombo possibilities as well. And now Stigma going for that Tassadar pick. Tassadar being another strong pick on Haunted Minds due to his ability to shield buildings, his ability to get Mule, and he's a great pair for that Illidan. Illidan getting shielded can be quite potential. Um, you know, so it's just really, really good. And uh, we're going to have to see what... Um, Stigma gets along with the Tassadar pick. Yeah, to be honest, I'm, I'm scared right now. The pushing power of Gamers 2, it's 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 pretty insane. Like a Savannah's and a Sagara left alone on any lane in any situation, they rip your fort down in, in no time. That's, that's just insane. So, like, Savannah's being even left alone while the mine fights are going on or anything like that, um, I'm pretty sure we're going to see something like that of Gamers 2. Uh, those... those I was about to say Polacks. What's the official term of Polish people? Like, how do you say? Do you actually say Polak or like Poles? I think. Poles. I don't know. No, like not know. North Pole and South Pole and stuff. Wait, I, I actually looked know. this up. I I'm I'm from America. I don't know anything. So. <laughs> but hey, hey, getting back into the job real quickly here, we do have a Malfurion pick from Gamers too. Again, a nice pick for that wombo combo possibility. You have the Devouring Maw into Entangling Roots, into Wailing Arrow, that Gamers 2 has been using a whole bunch in this tournament. And wow, we're gonna have ETC as well coming out now from Gamers 2. Yep, that's that looks really, really interesting. I, I love it. First of all, this is the Lily we were looking for all the time because we never saw her in, in all the games that have been uh, done so far. This is, I don't know, I, I love it. We have to see how how she pans out. I mean, she is for a reason at the moment not so popular. She is not the strongest one of all. But then again, sometimes I don't know. I really feel like she's she's doing the trick. Like her burst heal of the ultimate, it's it's pretty cool. Um, the mischance obviously sometimes helps a lot, especially when you're on the retreat. And sometimes we see also Lily's going for the slow. So uh, I can just hope we see those situations where Lily has sometimes that that tiny advantage. Yeah, I'm a little bit confused by the Lily pick. Not a traditional pick in the slightest, and an Uther to follow it up as well. So we have a warriorless Illidan comp here with that Lily, <laughs> with that Uther. And if I were to ever see a Lily pick, I wouldn't mind it in a, a double healer comp. Like that would probably be the best scenario for it. Um, I guess Uther is kind of the Suedo warrior here, but it's going to be a Jaina last pick there from Gamers 2. I gotta feel that they're getting a lot of value out of a last pick Jaina, especially with such a nice wombo combo possibility. It's it's crazy. We see a heavy damage combo on Gamers 2 and a heavy healing supporting combo on Stigma. This is this is kind of I don't know, North and South Pole. By the way, Pole is the right term. I just looked it up. <laughs> but no, this See, is really I was right. like, crazy. Like the opposite polarity here. How I mean, how to approach this map? Yeah, man, the poles with their polarity definitely an interesting. <laughs> that was an unintended pun, like poles and. <laughs> Dude, polarity. you are the sham two of <laughs> you're the sham two of Europe, man. It's it's just confirmed now. But yeah, dude, an interesting pick here coming out. Uther and Lily and an Illidan comp. Such an interesting. No warrior here. I mean, you can build Uther. He has a tank build that does benefit from having a second healer on your team. You do have that option to go black. Um, sorry, block amplified healing. Even a level seven version of Burning Rage. Their spell shield, imposing presence. You can build Uther to be a full fledged tank. And he really also benefits from having that second healer. Yep, everybody joins the lobby, but someone, please put me in that observer slot. Like all that pressure now that I'm, I'm suddenly in the, <laughs> in the lobby and on on gamers two side. I don't want to play. They're just too good. Yeah, 
and it looks. <laughs> and I, Nick, you can't believe it. You have to confirm those pics. I, ha I have to actually confirm it sometimes, man. It's just so confusing to me, but I kind of like it at the same time. It's definitely interesting to see. I'm really kind of curious to see how it's going to play out here. <laughs> A lily bruiser. <laughs> They're like, sure, why not? Dang. Oh, I love it. I definitely love it. Uh, finally, they assign me in the right spot. Everybody's going to the correct team. Just one player missing. Oh, this is going to be a, a very, very interesting game. Two teams, two completely different approaches on this map. Damage heavy, support and healing heavy. That's that's just crazy. Besides the fact that Mines is crazy. We have to see how big of a snowball comes out on this map. I mean, this map is known for a snowball. Uh, barely any chance to come back. But then again, we also saw, uh, we, we saw some American matches, actually. I can remember last month seeing uh, Mines coming out in the NA scene with a crazy uh, comeback. I, I wish I remember which one that was. Oh, the, the crazy comeback game? That was definitely Tempo Storm versus Complexity. Yeah, Complexity. I think that's it. Yep were basically done and out. They were facing a hundred skull golem, but Tempo Storm with the big throw, getting two of their members picked off on their victory march to the core of Complexity in such a close finish there, but Complexity able to take the win. Such a crazy game. And that yeah, that one went down in, in, in Heroes of the Storm's short history as a pretty exciting match. Uh now now it comes out. So apparently there was a bug. Someone, I don't know, timed out, and then it was auto picks or something like that. Oh, come on! I got so hyped. So what was wrong? I guess the Lily was wrong. Lily. I have to correct. imagine. I have to imagine that. Maybe it was a Diablo steal. I I don't know because the Diablo could have been nice there. Uh, I'm not sure if that's how the draft matched up though. Let's yeah. See. I also have to find oh. out the reason because, uh, as I said yesterday, uh, we had we had, for example, uh, some drafts where like one of the heroes were incorrect or the last one, for example. But like then then people always blame the draft tool. But apparently, I I said it earlier already. Sometimes it's actually the player having like connectivity issues. Then of course, before they join back, then the timer runs out or anything like that. So we have a random pick going on. Either way. This time it's correct, and if I'm not mistaken, Lily is Diablo, right? Yeah, that's what it looks like here. We're going to have Diablo, the Lord of Terror, coming out instead of the Lily pick. So tried to sound, or sorry, I tried to sound smart and justify the Lily Uther <laughs> pick and explain the whole tank Uther thing, but yeah, it's just gonna end up being Diablo. So so boring. Let's go home. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but, but it's actually not going to be a Diablo steal here um, from Stigma. Gamers 2 did choose ETC, and the last two picks for Stigma followed after that ETC were Diablo Uther. So very interesting. I f feel like Gamers 2 may have wanted Diablo more in their comp, but I guess they just feel that ETC, even with this kind of composition, is just good enough. Yep, and I, j I just pray that everything should be fine. But yeah, Gamers 2 won game up guys here in this best of three series it is one of the last games here in a loser bracket it is actually yeah pretty much the last one before we go into the loser bracket final but before that we have the last game of the winner bracket final so for those who run away after this game don't do it because you're gonna miss out on a lot so if gamers 2 win right now right after we have Navi versus Team Liquid game number three postponed from yesterday to today and whoever loses in that match, in that number three game out of this best of three, is going directly into the loser bracket final. And once that is done, we have it, our best of five final. I mean, the candidates right now, the possible candidates are Navi, Team Liquid, Gamers2, or Stigma. But one, we have to say bye-bye to one of them already. And that is either Stigma or Gamers2 right now here, since they are obviously in the loser bracket. So. I hope my overlays and everything is correct. Now we let's hop into the game. It's the first time I cast Mines. It's gonna be fun. It's yeah, definitely exciting to get a Mines game once in a while. And we do have, let's see, we have the team of Gamers 2 coming down into the Golem lane here of Stigma. Kind of unusual as they do have that Sylvanas going to go for the solo lane in top. 
quite interesting here. It's a lot of teams opting to just run a four-man Sylvanas lane, but I guess they just feel that the matching was definitely going to come out, so it really didn't matter as much. But wow, we're having a big rotation here from gamers too. Yep, it seems like it. But leaving the Jaina here, I guess the Jaina is just here for Zoken, maybe then sending the Savannas down. Is is that maybe something we we might see? But yeah, the push is coming out. Gamers too, really proactive here. This is this is something I definitely like. I mean, Jaina versus Uther. That's some something where Jaina definitely should win. But oh, look at this Goma Furion being pushed in the right direction under the tower. He has to decide which direction he goes. But there's Vala. Vala doing all the right clicks needed. Yes, leaping forward. No, it's not enough. It's not enough for a kill. Instead, Vala is the one losing most of the HP, but getting that heal from Uther. But Uther, for that, he had to leave the lane. For that, he's losing a lot of XP right now. What a cluster fun. <laughs> yeah, and Gamers see with the kind of tricky rotation there, rotating up to help the Sylvanas out and forcing Stigma to kind of follow in. Uh, to follow and chase them and deny that push. But yeah, we did have some crazy moves there from the Vala of Stigma, trying to get that pick off onto to the Gamers 2 Malfurion, but both heroes will be able to escape with their lives. Well, we have to see what's going on now. Do they keep those lanes? I mean, four was four in the bar in, in the top lane. I mean, and keep the pressure up. I mean, with Savannas you can do that, but the mines are coming up. You're gonna clear that wave and then jump in. And Stigma, they decide to go south in there. Now we have to see the race for the camps begin. But right now, nobody's even going for it. They just want that little edge over the enemy. I think at least one of them could have entered mine. But at the moment, gamers too. Are they gambling? Are they just going for the push and then entering mine? Or are they just ignoring it and say like, Yo guys, let's let's get a hundred golem against us. Either way, you see it already. They're going to secure the most valuable camps here in the mid with the most skulls out of it, but now Gamers 2 is coming in and not even all of them are killed. They even steal some prepared nice golems and look at Diablo completely being caught out. He even helps a bit with the skulls as well, so Gamers 2 now catching up. It's 10 versus 30, but look at Diablo. They're still gonna get at least two, four skulls camps. No, eight skulls it is. Four skulls? How many is it? The small um. camps. Yeah, I really like this move here and the strategy from Gamers 2. They went for the push, sacrificing some of the Skulls, but as I was talking about in the draft, 30 Skulls is enough, and look, they're even going to get more here. So again, Gamers 2 with the strategical edge in this game, and uh, it looks like, though, that Stigma wants to contest this. But it's a bit late. I mean, that golem is really, really low. But now they're all in. The question is now, who's going to get that golem stun? Nobody. Actually, they want to Oh, they want to focus on Joey. And he's actually going down. But they trade that Diablo again. The golem helping. They're just rooting them all up. Cigar tries to get some skulls before she's dying. But we end up with a 55 to 45 score. The positioning of Cigar was actually not too bad. He knew that he's most likely going to die. You can't run as a Cigar from Elidan unless you have more or the help of a support or someone. So he, his position is directly in the core of the golem, grabbing at least, I don't know, eight, nine skulls there. It's was, it was quite decent. Yeah, I don't know. I have to feel that I didn't like Gamers 2 decision there. They got a little bit too greedy and went for the boss, but getting cleaned up quite a bit there by Team Stigma. And yeah, Team Stigma now in that experience lead. Yeah, Gamers 2 does have the push advantage. And now the Skull advantage, which is quite nice, but as I said before, I mean, you can defend on this map, but I, we'll have to see how much of an impact is the Sylvanas going to be. And it well, looks like they might even just be defending here as well. Well, that Golem and that nice little uptime Stigma had outside of the mines actually gave them a tiny bit advantage on experience. It translates into like half of a level. But then again, of course, 10 more skulls on uh, Gamers 2 sides with the tier 1 towers already being down, which means that golem goes directly for the well, and everything beyond the well is going directly into the keep damage, which is quite decent, because look at it, the well is already down, going for the keep, and the 45 golem is, is, is stuck pretty much. He, he doesn't, like, that golem doesn't even get a tower down or anything, so that pretty much almost equalizes the experience right now. Yeah, I mean, let's see what's going to happen here. Will Stigma look for a fight here? We do have Gamers 2 trying to push in here, trying to get some extra damage done. We do have to flip onto the ETC. Will he get picked off here? No, it looks like he's just way too resilient. 
yep. in that situation. That lift over the gate, that would have been interesting. The ETC Sutra there being caught in. Maybe that was the key to the fight, but this way, ETC just too tanky. But now, again, nice pushing her back there, almost under the key, but all the damage is coming right now. And look at Red X, he's getting so much damage already, like he has to get away. Everybody just sip that well because it's going down pretty much soon, especially with that Sylvanas. Like, they were so clumped up that, like, even the curse spread everywhere and well this is not this is not going anywhere bruiser camp might be the next station um i can't remember when the last golem died but i think two minutes from the last golem being down are uh, we gonna have a new mines but oh look at this illidan morton going in but whoa that was yolo yeah a little bit of a mistake there Morgan getting caught out there, and now Gamers 2 once again looking to apply the pressure in the top lane here. Sylvanas being able to disable that fort, rendering the defense of Stigma relatively useless here. But they are trying to push them back as much as possible, and uh, yeah, Diablo kind of coming forward here. Yeah, but experience-wise, this is really bad. We have the Jaina soaking experience in the bottom lane, as well as well, potentially some some nice damage. At least getting that well down before the next mines. And yeah, we have 20 seconds till the next mines. The Illidan dying, sure, that is is a bit bummed with the experience. But I mean, we it's only six minutes in. But never mind that. He just came back from the fountain, gets the revenge on the Jaina, and I awesomely missed it on camera. Either way, five seconds. G2 was pretty much in. The mines already. Now they're going outside again and they go for the keep. The question is now Stigma just taking the entire mines and gamers to ignore it. Wow, oh, yeah. where is this one going? Well, so gamers 2 just has that really strong pushing power, so they're not afraid to give up a couple skulls here. Really not too worried about defending their bottom fort from the golem of Stigma. But look but how fast they are already. So many skulls here, yeah, yeah. so many skulls. I mean, and this uh, is 68 is... skulls with every camp taken except for the golem. I mean, maybe they get their revenge now here on that Tassada. That would be great. All they need is stun, but he's already slowed by Jaina. One more shield. There is a heal maybe coming. Nope, there's nothing. They already gave up on the entire thing, which means with that Tassada kill, they should be able to at least claim uh, the 32 skulls you get from a golem. And that's pretty much about it. But at the same time, outside, we have, of course... Well, Stigma saying hello to that keep, but I'm not sure if that's enough time, to be honest. Yeah, and it looks like Gamers2 wants to come out of bottom and go for a big flank. We might see the very first team fight here, full-on team fight at level 10 of the game. And uh, yeah, Gamers2 moving in here. Will we have this fight? And it looks like we will. We will. Yeah, see death, a lot of death, and Elidan, well, so far, that maw completely whiffing, it was supposed to be pre-metamorphosis, but well, now he's going to work, metamorphosis on pretty much four heroes, so it's just the Uther down, but Gamers 2, yeah, they march forward, and they want to get someone, Tassada at the moment being the focus here, the last vision is the last thing he does, that's the second one being down, and now the question is, do they keep on going, but they have to defend the golem, that's, that's pretty much the bad news, however, look at that little golem, it's really a, a small one, tiny one, 32 skulls, but, well, he's probably gonna get at least one tower down. Yeah, it's looking like one of the key towers may fall here for Stigma, but also have the Golem, the 68 Skull Golem, dying so fast here. Gamers 2's comp just so very strong. Not gonna be able to see, save one of the cannon towers here, but that's all that's gonna fall, and it looks like we have a very, very even game as far as the experience and the pushing of both teams here. Yep, and it's, it's, it's pretty amazing to be honest, like if we the meta before the patch without like where Jaina was not doing as much damage on that golem um, I would like to see a direct comparison if you could go back in time change the client and see how fast that 65 golem or 68 uh, skull golem actually went down but Jaina there doing quite a lot of damage obviously she is well decent into it pretty close to Sagara even so it's it's really working well out for gamers too. They skip a lot of skulls for the sake of pushing manually, I just call it like this. And they still defend in a very nice fashion. But at least well stigma on a good track now because we have the small bruises and the big bruiser camp now pushing and that means yeah, 
Gamers 2, they have to mount a nice defense, but look at this. It's almost cleared out already. And look at this! Stage dive, pretty much behind the lines, but... Oh, that was a bit off-target. Chat just pushing him there away, but now... Oh, Chat, the root, were coming up, but... Ah, uh, um, he's probably gonna make it. He's probably gonna make it. Wailing arrow. Oh no. Oh no, yeah. that divine shield. Gamers 2 really wanted to take a fight there because Stigma ahead on that cannon tower count. That cannon tower falling in. Well, they're, they're even kind of, but if they take out that top wall of Gamers 2, they would have been ahead on the way to 13. So they really wanted to take that fight before Stigma reached level 13. And now they have hit it as well, but Gamers 2 close. And we do have the mine spawning here, and another standoff in the bottom lane. Yeah, 13 versus 12, they have like all the vision they need. Vala has to come a bit too late into this fight, but there, Shad is going in. Shad is going in, the question is now, is he getting all the burst? At the moment, it doesn't really look like Archon on a triple maw. Now all the timing has to come in, but Metamorphosis pretty much on four heroes right now. Apocalypse, so much damage right now, just going down. Sylvanas is the first one to fall. Everybody with low HP, nice in the back lines of Stigma at the moment, but Illidan, he doesn't care, he goes in. But, oh, does he do it? Yes, the evasion. The evasion was up and, oh my god, Malfurion. This is a bad, bad position after that slow. He's the second one to fall. And Gamers 2 getting a beating here right now. And this is also the worst timing you can get because the mines are up, which means we have at least the central camps most likely now secured by Stigma. The Devouring Maw from ADRD, the Zagara of Gamers 2, was so very good. It trapped three of those heroes, but they did not have the follow-up they needed to... Wailing Arrow was on cooldown until just this second, and they were also missing some other key cooldowns that would have comboed so well for them. Oh, and look at ADRD. That's a bad position. He gets. Oh, he gets the lift. Wrong direction. ADRD. That was a big YOLO action. Pretty much what we saw earlier from the Illidan, but this is a. <laughs> this right now is, is. I don't know, much more crucial. You can't really do these kind of plays. Which means gamers too, they have to trade this keep now manually, just get it down without any goal and whatsoever, and they have to mount a crazy defense because this is gonna be a 80 to uh, 92 golem. This is gonna this is gonna hurt. Yeah, stigma definitely in a good position with that 92 skull golem. Gamers too is gonna be hard pressed to stop this. I feel that this has to be almost certainly a keep here. But will Gamers 2 be able to hold on? They do have quite some damage to defend this golem, but we do have Stigma barreling down the bottom lane. Gonna help assist this golem. Yeah, Gamers they go 2. go with it. Yes, Car they, they're Car gonna on. support this golem, or who does actually support who is the question. But do you think they can mount this defense, get the golem down with like five Stigma heroes around it? I kinda doubt it, but maybe Gamers 2, they show me something. No, Sideshow. Going in, not getting the golem stun, so so far they just have the gate still to prevent that fight, but now everything is down so the fight can break out that golem, well, on about 90% so far, but Stigma, they can just peel, and that's what they do at the moment, Chad just looking for someone to get that lift directly into their own heroes, but it's not really working, they just guard the golem at the moment, and the problem is, the keep, look at... Look at the keep, it's going down about 40% on that golem. He, it's pretty lucky that it goes for that tower, but the next station is the core and Gamers 2. It looks like they're gonna hold unless a big fight breaks out and they're gonna lose. Yeah, Stigma has that level 16 talent here, so they shouldn't be too afraid of a fight here. And here comes the engage from Gamers 2. Oh, I'm not really sure if that stage dive was the right thing. Look at his HP, he's actually going down. Oh, he's going down. His second one, Malfurion, before the mall and everything. This is GG, it has to be GG. Those stage divers, they, they, behind the lines of the enemy, it never really worked out. This was so fast over, it's, it's pretty crazy. The burst damage of Stigma, and then of course this map, it, it just didn't work out for 10 minutes. This game looked so equal, but the last four minutes were absolutely blessed by by stigma. Yeah, gamers too, trying to employ that kind of not cheesy strategy, but kind of just a different strategy for this map, going for additional push and kind of sacrificing some skulls. But in the end, it didn't work out. They took a bad team fight. That was the main issue there. Yeah. But then that allowed stigma to just gather a 92 skull golem and. When you have a level 16 to level 14 lead and a 92 skull golem pushing into a key, pushing into the core, it's just impossible to defend it. So 
nice strategy from gamers too, but the execution not so good because of that one team fight. Well, I actually think it was it was possible um, to win that fight even with that golem. I mean, the golem was about to die on the core, probably just taken off the shield and maybe 10% or something. But that ETC, like, did you see the reaction of Stigma there? The stage dive comes and pretty much everybody is just, I don't know, in, in diamond formation spreading out in every direction possible and completely dodging it. ETC not getting a power slide, not a knockback in, in any direction. He doesn't hit anyone with the stage dive. The initiation just twice completely whiffed and everything that followed was just a disaster. The maw coming out after two of them are down. It's It, it just didn't work out. It was like a bad fight with or without Golem that would have been a disaster. Anyway, it's a 1-1 one -one situation. What more can we ask? Which means we are going in a game number three. Uh, that means two minute breaks or so, Nick. And then we're yep. coming back.